It takes a million diamonds mined to obtain one one carat diamond. This gym quality. Now, just out of curiosity, what do your one carat prices start at in your store? What do they start at? Four thousand. What do they go up to? Ten or eleven. All right, that's kind of across the board. How can you sell something that took a million to obtain one for eleven grand? Let me tell you how many that is. That's a thousand piles of diamonds with a thousand diamonds in each pile. That's a million. Out of all those piles, one will weigh a carrot. And oh, then you'll negotiate. It takes five million diamonds mine to obtain a two carat. I've asked site holders. I've asked people in mining. I've been up to Canada. I fly all over the world, actually. What are the odds on a three carat? Nobody's ever told me. I don't know if there is an answer, but I've not found it. Five million to obtain a two carat. And some of you in here will sell a two carat for $20,000. And then you'll negotiate it. Oops. You know if you take 10% off and you're a $2 million store, you lost $200,000 that year. Can you afford that? Fixed expenses in our industry are higher than the fixed expenses in any other. It's how long we keep our inventory. Anybody in here really, really good with math? Somebody? All right, sir, you're good with math? All right, listen to me very carefully. Are you ready? How many of you have a colored diamond? How many of you have a yellow one carat in your store? A few. Thank you. Yellow is hot right now, guys. And if you're not going to sell it, if you're not going to have it, you're not going to sell it. That's how that's going to work. If I come in your store and want one, you don't have one, guess what? I'm going somewhere else. All right? Colored diamonds happen once every 10,000 times in nature. They have to mine a million diamonds to get a carrot. They had to mine 10,001 carrots to get a yellow one. Now before you answer that, sir, uh, what is the price of your one carrot that's yellow? 15,000. 15,000. Now wait just a second. They have to mine a million diamonds to get a carrot. Are you with me? And they have to mine 10,000 carrots to get that one. And you'll sell it for 15 grand? You have a problem. How many did they mine? 10 million. 10 billion. It should be 150,000. Do you know you guys don't believe in your own prices? Oops. That's a big goose. The price on the tag should be real if you know how to prove it's real. Let's look at another one. They already moved 250 tons with ears crushed to find a carrot. The dump trucks you see running up and down the street, 250 of those full of dirt. The odds of finding the diamond in 250 tons are 22 million to one because they're one fifth of the gram. 22 million to one odds. The experts are telling us mines are closing all over the world. I've been told, can't prove it, but I've been told by higher ups that there's approximately 40 years known diamond deposits left if they don't find other major pipes. <coughs> well, I can price them if that happens. Maybe then you'll start putting the real price on, right? 250 tons. So, let me pick on a young lady. <laughs> Dominique, you're going to become a diamond miner, okay? And they come from Russia, Australia, Africa. I'm going to send her to Australia. She's going to be in the outback of the Aborigines and kangaroo. She doesn't have to find the mine. I'm going to take her right to it. 
I'm going to buy 250 brand new one-ton trucks, uh, dump trucks. I'm going to fly them over there and line them up. My line of trucks is long, 250 of them. I'm running out of money, so we're going to go to the store where America shops, Walmart. <laughs> I told everybody that yesterday was in my presentation. I was there one time, and I thought I was at the filming and deliverance. Have you ever been there? <laughs> that place is unbelievable. But anyway, I'm going to go buy you a bunch of uh, shovels, buckets, pickaxes, flat rock hammer, anvils, uh, you know, safety glasses, and you're going to start picking. She's going to take her pickaxe. She's going to shove it down in the surface of the other truck. She's going to pull out a big old clod of blue ground and kimberlite, and it can be in dirt, sand, rocks, whatever. It's a brackish material. She's going to put some dirt in the bucket, take it over on the screen, start shaking it back and forth, start filling the bucket back up, do it again. A few hours, she's got her first bucket filled up. She puts it in the back of the first truck. Do you think this young lady can fill 251-ton dump trucks in her lifetime? <laughs> She's got muscles. You will have her. <laughs> and the very last bucket in the very last truck doesn't care. She's going to be about 250 years old. Wow. She's going to have to eat Twinkies because they got preservatives in them. <laughs> And it's really amazing when you start pricing these, what you're doing to yourself. Five times that amount of there's crust for a two. 10,000 times that much for your yellow one character. 15 grand. Let's talk about the cut. More and more diamonds are being cut to triple X, triple zero, ideal. A whole lot of diamonds are still cut by a blind guy at the hatch in the dark room. <laughs> whole lot. Sacrificing brilliance, fire, simulation, retaining weight. The people that cut diamonds over at Carrot Apprentice for 10 years. If JT Manga's son continues in medical school, he's got a nine-year adventure before he's out, and you're going to cut diamonds for 10 years before you're ever allowed to touch a carrot. We were in a large cutting factory in New York a while back. I have a lot of friends who cut diamonds. Gabby Tapkowski, if anybody in here knows him, he's a friend of mine. And, uh, we were in this cutting factory, and they were the smallest one that day on the wheel of that factory was a three carat. There was a gentleman in his 80s cutting a deep Wallace 20 carat emerald shape. He took it off the dock, handed it to JT. It was $3 million. I wonder why the really old guy had that. Think it had something to do with experience? Maybe. And then right on TV, they say they're forever and they're a girl's best friend. The guys get the dogs. Dogs are nice. <laughs> when you bought your last car, no matter what it is, they tell you, hey, it's going to last forever. You know the average car is driven an hour a day for five years before it's traded off. The average one carrot is worn 24 hours a day for 40 years before it's transferred down to the next generation. And diamonds go up. Every 10 years since World War II, they've kind of doubled in value, so not quite that close. Tell me something that you can use all day, every day, the rest of your life, and pass it down to the next generation. It's worth more than what's been bought. How about your car? Houses have constant upkeep. Wardrobes, constant upkeep. Worn with a little respect to the last of a lifetime, they are generational. How about any? Over 100 years ago, the Titanic broke in half, and they got this submarine going around the bottom, picking up the plates in China that spilled out. And depending on what deck you're on, it's five to 10 cents a piece. And they're pulling it up, and that's five grand. Toshi Expedition went down 400 years ago, and about a hurricane, I've got a friend that dove for uh, Mel Fisher, got a photo of him on the bottom of the ocean floor, scraping the dirt off of a silver bar. He has a store close to Milwaukee. You know Trey Gussard? He dove for them. Top restaurants are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for wine bottles that are 400 years old and still poor. Really? 
Dinosaurs are dated at 65 million. Diamonds are dated at 3.4 million. What if you put an antiquity value on it? There's nothing older than sold. Did you hear me? There's nothing older than sold. And then, very quickly, I'll tell you a quick story about me and we'll continue. We sell sentiment, feelings, and emotions. Jewelry is the byproduct. Diamonds are the byproduct. We sell white. In 1965, my mom and dad decided to take me out on their 20th anniversary. I was 12. My mother was a model right after high school, and her dad owned a jewelry store. Never met him in my life, but I have one of his business cards, and it's good. And it says, Selby's Manufacturing Jewelry and Railroad Repair on it. That's what it says. She is the ninth child born. My grandfather named her Julie after jewelry, said she's the most beautiful baby he'd ever seen. She worked in his jewelry store. And December 7, 1941, history changed. My mom was working in New York and Chicago. They were taking photos of her by cars and what have you. She moved to Anderson, Indiana. And there's a book written about these ladies called Rosie the River. She put on the skin on airplanes. That's my mom. She worked 12 hours a day, seven days a week, four years without a day off, is what I've been told. War effort. She met my dad there, and they got married. They got two gold bands, and I was going through a trunk with JT up in our attic a while back, and about four inches or so down, uh, we went, and there was this yellow card it's from a person from Rogers Jewelers in Anderson, Indiana, with a thank you card and a note and a receipt for two gold bands for 38 bucks. They didn't have any money. War ended. My mom loved jewelry. And she said, J.W., it's time to go get away to bring the standard size and a quarter carat. She wanted hers bigger than everybody else's, so she got a third carat. And I had the diamonds on the top, and the wedding band has the diamonds on the top. Little old ladies come in all the time. They're 85, 90, and they say, if you've ever had it off, they've worked with it. And then they want to hand it to you. Why in the crap they spit on it? <laughs> Why do they do that? When my last day comes, I can't be fired. I've always wanted to say, and I hope she comes in on that day, because I want to say, can I spit on it when I hand it back to you? Jeez. Don't do that. I had one guy dump 14 feet in my hand out of the yellow envelope. was like, crap, they all had gold. It was like, oh, my God. That gave me a creep, man. But anyway, hers was bigger than everybody else's, and every night she'd wash it off. I lost my mom when I was a kid. Before they shut the, ring, the lid, I was the one that reached in there and wiggled that off her knuckle and I put it in my pocket. And I still have her. Now somebody said, hey Shane, I'll give you $5,000 if I have 30 carat for the ring that I sell it. Do you guys really know what you do, really? You think you just sell diamonds and jewelry? Three things romance. Be ready. Be some bright. That yellow should be a lot more than 15 grand, young man. <laughs> Three things romance. Sell them bright. One is value added statements proving that the price on the tag is real. And you need value added statements on gold and platinum, colored gemstones, and all product. And you all need to know how to use them because that's your ability to romance the money without ever talking about the money. Just makes a perceived value in their head keep going up more and more and more, okay? Second thing romance is the beauty of the item. And boy, oh boy, do we have a kindergarten vocabulary, sorry. Sparkles. Create. Beautiful, short. Oh, that's a nice stone. I stepped on stones this morning outside the hotel. I never sold one. Every time you call it a stone, you devalue it. They're called diamonds, right? Bad habit. So what you've got to do is change your ability to romance the product. And if they've been three other stores first, because they're going to come to yours first or last, because they always go to the best first or last. And if they've been three other places, listen to salespeople, and everybody goes, man, that's really pretty. It's a nice stone. They come to your store. Man, that's really pretty. It's a nice stone. Oops. So you've got to stretch a little bit. A rare marriage of fire and ice. A violent collision of light and energy. Ballistic, nuclear, white hot, crystallized intensity. A rare marriage of fire and ice. It depends how you say it, doesn't it? 
girl's best friend, man's best way. Cut by somebody with hands and skilled as a surgeon. Pity of your nature and craftsmanship of man. Learn parallel, no match perfection and go. Sparkles. <laughs> so guys, you gotta change how you romance and you gotta bring a little more sophistication to it. And you can't sound like the dude down the street that they just came from. Is that clear? Third thing romanced. Reason they came in. And we get desensitized. I've been doing this 45 years. I'd love to have a dollar for every time I've heard hey, it's our 10th point, 30th anniversary. People come in, listen to this very carefully, they pull your door open and choose to pull it up to give you money. Did you hear me? On a clerk ticket, the client comes in and says, hey, it's my anniversary, I bought my wife's grand pearls, client automation. There's three kinds of sales in our industry, creative, clerks, and coconut. They chose to celebrate an event that's spatial, we're spending money on, with you. Now people say, it's my 30th anniversary, go, oh man, that's great, what an accomplishment, we keep talking. They just said it's my 30th anniversary. Did you hear me? Talk less, listen more. Don't ever make it about yourself when somebody's coming in to celebrate an event and make your event bigger than theirs. They came in to celebrate an event. Is that clear? So you've got to learn to how to romance the event and make the event a bigger deal than they thought it was because when you make the event a bigger deal than they thought it was, the price just became insignificant. They'll even upsell themselves. But we don't. Let me tell you, I've been in stores where a man lady came in because her daughter, their daughter is coming in from her fourth tour in Afghanistan. Woo. I have two kids, pardon me, I have two grandkids in the U.S. Air Force in the military. We're a military family, and that's a pretty big deal. They come in and celebrate the birth of a baby. Women love just because it's especially when a man takes the time to do something extra special. We've got the doghouse key get her out. Now, I've trained in 4,500 stores, and I've heard men come in stores a lot except in the doghouse. And my, first, my best doghouse get her out or I ever had is a guy that bought a Harley and his wife didn't know. When they got married, she said no motorcycles over my dead body. And he went with his buddies to the Harley shop one morning. She said, honey, you can get a coat, boots, you know, a t-shirt, no motorcycles. He stops by and says, I can't go home. I found out he spent about $35,000. And I said, that's going to get your wife a real nice little something. He had no idea it had to be more than he spent. And by the time he got to the price, he goes, Shane, I wasn't planning on spending $70,000 for that. I said, well, that's not my problem. I didn't buy the Harley, dude. You did. <laughs> well, isn't that a fact? I didn't buy the Harley. I didn't make him go do that. So I was speaking in Vegas a couple of years ago. I'm going to chase a rabbit for a moment because this is funny. I had an audience of four or 500 there. And I was talking to them about something I brought out to the dog house, Keith Get Her Out. And I said, I've never been in a jewelry store where a lady came in and said she's in the doghouse. Not one time in my life have I ever been in a store where a lady said that. And I know you get in the doghouse once in a while, crap. And so there's this little lady, snow white hair, about in the middle of the audience, in her mid-80s, beautiful little lady, tons of jewelry on, dressed to the nines, and she was like donkey on track. Chain, 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 chain. I said, yes. And she said, I know where women go when they're in the doghouse. This is the first time I've ever heard this. You could have heard a pin drop. So I had somebody take her wireless mic. Now the whole audience is turned for this little lady. And she's standing up, and I said, where do women go? And she said, we go to Victoria's Secret. How <laughs> <Now> I know! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now I know. Uh, mm -hmm. Woohoo! I kind of finally figured that one out before I got too old. You've got to romance the reason. And you don't know how because we're desensitized. Yesterday we talked about absolutes and the fifth was wowing everybody. Those of you that were here. 
and I write articles in Instore. I've had one every month since 04. And I'll write an article once in a while about WOW, and I get emails from salespeople, managers, and owners, and they say nothing wows me. And I'll say, is it about you? That's just my text back. Who's it about? The client. You don't have customers. Walmart does. It's the client. The guest, all right? So you've got to learn to romance. The beauty, value-added statements when you're selling bridal, and the reason they came in. And usually you get more objections selling diamonds and bridal than any other product. 